Hello, SpongeKex here with my final episode of my playthrough of Conker's Bad Fur Day. Here is one of the most annoying parts of the war level besides the final escape, and that is the tank sequence. This is just a really frustrating part. It's really long, really tedious, and... Here is you're supposed to wait for the searchlight to be out of your view, but, but even when it's out of your view, it still can somehow shoot at you. It's ridiculous. You pretty much gotta wait for it to be all the way turned around. The part probably wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the annoying, uh, like a uh, railway to gotta slam down along with the narrow pathways. Who in their right mind thought that was a great idea for a tank sequence? Hey, let's hey, let's make a difficult tank sequence, except let's have all the platforms be narrow. Won't that be fun? Let's have it where you have to get in and out of your vehicle and not get shot down. Now, why did they save the fun tank gameplay for the multiplayer mode, and not the single player mode as well? That being said, though, there is a pretty nifty boss fight with a um, tank at one point. It's like the developers heard criticism about tank controls in video games and they just wanted to mess with the players and make it as frustrating as possible. By not only making the controls frustrating, but everything around it just as frustrating. It's usually in games when you're in a tank, you're in a wide open area. Here they thought it would be a fun idea to have it on a bunch of narrow pathways. The only way they can make it worse is if you're stuck in a bunch of narrow hallways in a tank. Yeah, for some reason this game's logic is every time you create a giant hole, the best thing to do is jump in it. Oh. 
Oh well. In for a penny, in for a pound, I suppose. Yeah, I like how in the Xbox remake they made this place look more massive. It looks like you can actually swim out into the distance even further. But, um, see here it's obvious, like, where the barrier ends off. It, the Xbox version does a good job at giving the illusion that it's almost endless. Until you reach that invisible barrier that prevents you from going any further. The evil little girl. Now, is it just a coincidence that she looks like a young version of Barry? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's dangerous around here, little girl. I don't think you want to be here. Um, hi. Have you come to rescue me? What? What is that? That's the, um, inverse phase sonar. Very efficient with, um, oh. How do you know about that? Uh, school? I never learned things like that at school. <laughs> anyway, what is it? It fires a missile, I think, a Teddy Funken U-47 intercontinental ballistic missile. A missile? Yes, like that one. That's a Susie 9mm. The hate bot was using. <laughs> don't, don't you worry, little girl. I'll rescue you. Oh, goody, goody. Yeah, my parents are bound to have some cash. Sheesh, conquer. <laughs> yeah, Conker's character is very inconsistent in this game. There are some parts where it seems like he really wants to help someone out, and then there are parts where he has, like, pretty messed up motives. I'm gonna skim through it eventually, because it gets really old with that. Just gotta keep um, shooting at the missiles and shooting at the tank. Or keep popping up. Yeah, honestly, originally I didn't know you could shoot at the missiles. I thought you had to keep evading them, but eventually I finally figured it out while playing this. <laughs> Luckily, a lot of chocolate respawns during this part, so it's easy to heal yourself during this section. I find it funny how in the Xbox remake, like, they gave Conker, like, a toothy smile during that part. <laughs> I like how the delayed missile just popped up. So was it just standing still during that whole cutscene? Just waiting, waiting for Conker to finish so they could drop on him? That's funny. I'm so, so happy. I'm going to see my mommy and daddy again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, come out. Let's try and get you out of here. So I just have to wonder, like, what was the whole point of this part? Like, why do we have to take out the fellow enemy tanks if the whole plan all along was just for the little girl to kill Conker the whole time? It makes no sense. <laughs> 
I don't know why. I, I kind of have a soft spot for like funny slow motion scenes. Some work and but some don't. But I thought it was kind of funny. I'd love to find out like what the origin of this character was, because <laughs> when I first played this game I was thinking she was just a puppet, but she then mentioned how she hasn't been a little girl in such a long time, and so that implies she used to be a living creature, but something happened to her where they turned her into a puppet. Possessed puppet. Now that is some freaky steampunk um, <laughs> design right there. Yes, Mr. Squirrel. I'm the brain and the eyes, and he's the brawn. <laughs> I'm taking over. Yeah, I'll admit when I first played this, it took me a while to figure out like what to do. Now, Once you figure out what to do, though, this boss fight's actually pretty easy, but this you just gotta be very patient. It five, you gotta know how to evade the attacks, but... At least this one feels more fair, though, than some of the other, like, uh, boss fights. Some of the boss fights just drag on way too long, or they feel like, um, they're either too easy or they rely too much on luck. So this is one where it actually feels more like it's based on skill. Yeah, this is a more fun tank challenge than, um, so the key here is to, um, you know, keep, like, uh, popping out when it's recharging, and then you gotta quickly shoot and get back in there. Controls are a little tricky during this part, so it takes a while to get used to, but... This one's kind of like the hardest one to figure out. Like when I first played this game, I had no idea how to get past this, but eventually I figured it out. The key is you gotta go on the opposite end to lure it in that direction, then you gotta quickly rush over in the opposite direction and quickly shoot while you have the chance. One thing I like about this boss fight is it's the only one that feels like it actually raises the stakes during each round. Because almost every boss fight in this game, heck, probably every boss fight in this video game has like the exact same thing with each turn. Like, um, the way to attack the boss, you gotta do it the exact same way. The bosses don't change up their attack patterns, and this is the only boss fight in the game that actually does that. Like, yeah, you could argue that you still have to do the same thing throughout the entire boss fight, but at least it gets trickier. He's not just using the same first attack he did the first phase. He ups the ante each one. It's like, the first two weapons he pulled out, they actually, like, um... You know, were kind of like slower weapons. This one's more rapid fire, and it recharges much less frequently. Oh. No, no, keep calm. 
Cup 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 as well. Rodent? Rodent? Oh no. He didn't make it. <sighs> he was a great guy. A superb soldier. A military tactician. And yet, he was mortal. Like the rest of us. But at least we showed that bitch who's boss. Mr. Squirrel! <laughs> Guess what? The show's not over till the little girl sings. Ooh, what's this? A little red button. I think I'll press it. Ooh, and what's that? A lovely countdown. I wonder what's going to happen now. <laughs> yeah, I noticed how in the Xbox remake they made it look like she was dying during this part. You actually see her getting weaker and falling to the ground. So, uh, I gotta like that touch a lot better. Because regardless, it's implied she dies during this part anyways. The whole place blows up in the end. This is my least favorite part of the entire level. Holy crap. I'm just glad there's a checkpoint once you finally get out of the area, but even then, getting to that is so frustrating. Damn lasers. And then it really tries fooling you for, for like, first time players. Um, once you finally get out, you try running for the door, and then a bunch of lasers pop up immediately, and they can kill you with one touch, and, uh... That was just a real dick move of the programmers. have a bazooka during this part. It's real annoying because they're really trying to make it harder to kill all of them at once. I like how in the remake they just have Concrete use his regular gun that he used throughout this level. Now this is the most frustrating part, especially in the N64 version. The Xbox version, this is actually the easiest part of the level, but here, holy shit. Um, the Teddies, they have bazookas during this part, and they can instantly kill you with one hit. So, you think like the strategy would be to make sure to take them all out one at a time, but that's impossible because eventually it comes to a point where you're surrounded and there's just no one. So, this is a segment where you pretty much have no choice but just run it and hope for the best. Trust me, easier said than done. I got lucky during this part. I kept dying so many times. Okay, not this part, the next part. <laughs> I forgot I showed footage to show how easy it is to die during this part, but let's do it again. This time I should be able to get through. Yeah, I find it strange how this part they bother showing the countdown, but then during the bomb sequence um, in the Unga Bunga level they didn't bother. They did in the Xbox remake at least, though. I thought that was nice. 
Let me know how many seconds we have left. Oh, I got lucky there. Wait, wait for me! Wait for me! Where you going? What? Hey guys, hold it there! There's another one! Oh my giddy on! Snipers! <laughs> Now, I'm not sure if, like, this part was, like, um, the speech, like, right here was supposed to be, like, a parody of something, but, um, I'm not gonna lie, I actually really do like this part of the game, um, like, uh, I actually do think, of what they say during this part is really true. <laughs> I am not a big fan of war in real life, I think, um, you know, it's just a waste of resources and a ridiculous overreaction between people, so, you know, the speech right here that, um, uh, the sergeant gets the conqueror. I thought this was a pretty good part of the game. You're awake. Come over here, boy. Come on, look at this. Yeah. What a terrible thing, you know. You're right there. All these fine young men sent off to do the dying. Those big wigs. Those pen pushers. Those guys who never ever see a single bullet was past their heads. We want to get them down here. Those so called generals in their big fancy houses. 20 miles behind enemy lines. Who are they to tell us? Who are they indeed? Look at that. What a sight. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The horror. The horror. Did I got that bell for a second? Uh, yeah. Now I remember. Countdown. Oh, shit. <laughs> get like what Conker's deal is with Rodent. There's like times where he seems like he's a good friend of his and then but then it seems like he actually hates it. I don't get that. So the windmill is now destroyed. Yeah, I noticed like how um, in the N64 version, there's a lot of flames everywhere. They were absent in the Xbox remake. But um, in the remake, though, you see a lot of ashes flying around. You just don't see any flames. And... So now practically every level is sealed off now. So there's only one one place to go now, and that's um, the bank, a.k.a. the Panther King's Castle in Disguise. And the queen bee is dead. Wizard of Oz fashion. Uh, it's like the house that dropped on the witch. Oh, now the spooky chapter is barred off tried going back there after completing that level it's like the hole is still there but you can't go through it and so the flames don't hurt you during this part okay they did in the war level The barn level still open. But in the Xbox version, it would have been sealed off. Let's see. 
I wonder if the back tower pathway is sealed off. Looks like it's still open. Cool. Yeah, I actually managed to skip this cutscene, the Xbox remake. All I did was um, do a high oh, jump into no. the hole before getting the to the entrance, and I somehow uh, skipped oh, the sure. entire cutscene. Oh, well, obviously not. Ah. Oh, Rogan! Rogan! Hey, it's good to see you, man. What happened? Ah. Oh, that's all, but you know what? I reckon that that suit really worked. I was flying through the air. Next thing is, bam! I saw this thing coming towards me. Kind of like a windmill. Um, doesn't seem to be there anymore. Oh well. Never mind. At least I'm still here. So, what's happening? Um, I'm not really sure. But, um, the war seems to be over. You might as well go on your way. Give my regards to the guy. Yeah, I will. Catch you later? Catch you later. You can buy me a pint. Okay. Can I just say something? Yeah, that depends what it is. It was a real privilege working with you. I, I would have to say, if ever I need to go on an operation such as that again, I hope that it's with you. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to say. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Soldier. Um, this man. <laughs> what a great guy. <sighs> Idiot. What a jerk. <sighs> no, I admit, I've always wanted to get inside the windmill during this game, but never like this. <laughs> I hate how the Xbox remake got but rid of the music here. during this part. Anyway, I like how you hear Don Weezo's scene playing in the background. It builds up suspensefully until oh, Barry no, shows no up. One. I hate how they I got rid of that home, in the Xbox please? remake. I said we may have a little job. Take it or leave it. Okay, I'll take it. Like, these pants are so uncomfortable. Oh, fancy meeting you here. Oh, Barry. <laughs> you look great. Really? I thought you said you didn't know this guy. Oh, yeah, I know him. He's like my boyfriend. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm her boyfriend. Am I interrupting something here? When you two little lovebirds are finished with your reunion tata taste shit, maybe we can get on with the job at hand, please? Okay, okay. What do you want us to do? Okay. Since your little escapade... Yeah, I hate how small the role Barry actually did have in this game. Um, especially compared now to what could have been. I mean, um... Twelve Tales Barry Conquer 64, she was supposed to be a playable role. character, for crying out loud. And then, um... Not to mention how misleading the beginning of this game is. Um, okay. It says it's a game starring Conker and Barry. Um, one and I get it, it's like a nostalgic uh, throwback to both Conker's Pocket what? Tales and supposedly how the original opening of uh, 12 Tales was it's supposed to be, I suppose. So those hers. had like um, a little cartoony intro that said like starring Dude. Conker and Barry. So I get that it was like a nostalgic throwback, but still, it doesn't really fit this game at all because... Barry is just such a minor character in this game up until the very end. We didn't get enough scenes um, of development between her and Conker, both together or separately even, so... 
It seems like the developers are trying hard to make Barry an unlikable character, which is such a shame, though. I know a lot of people, um, you know, really wanted to like this character. They just thought she had, like, a cute design, but then, um, yeah. <laughs> there's, like, implications that she's cheating on Conker, and they made it more evident in the Xbox remake, because there's a flat-out flyer where she, um, wants you to call her up to have sex with her, basically. And then, um, not to mention how there's, um... You know, they show how she's actually a model for a porno magazine in the Xbox remake, so, yeah. <laughs> it's like, they, it's like um, they really didn't want people to feel sorry for her death or something, and so they had to try adding in little hints that she's not a likable character or something, but it's like, darn it, though, people want her to be likable. They felt sorry for Conker when she died, so I hate how... Um, I mean, they especially did it over the top in the remake. The part where she dies, they tried making, like, um, comical of how ridiculously long it was. Like, in this one, she just gets shot for a few seconds and she's dead. And the remake, they had to keep going and going while they badly animated her as she was getting shot down. And so it just made it so frustrating. Now, this cutscene was done a little better in the, um, in this version. It didn't really make much sense in the original. So yeah, I know they're spoofing out the Matrix right here, but um... It's like, uh, in this one, you have it where, um, while he's being uh, stopped by the guards, you then hear, like, um, the metal detector go off, um, because it sensed all the weapons that Conker had in his bag. And then after that happens, Conker then pulls out his guns and starts shooting. And, um, I hate how in this version they just have, they skip that whole part and have Conker just go straight to punching the weasel guard. Please place any metallic objects in the trip. Yeah, I thought it worked a lot better in this. I don't know why Conker had two guns during this part, though. Um, I don't know. It looks, I, I don't mind. Like, some people might have liked him having dual wielding guns, but I thought it worked better for him to have one gun like he did in um the remake. Otherwise, like, they did a good job at redesigning this area in the remake. Um, like, the graphics are in this part look a lot better, but the, there's no denying that the animations or the cutscenes were a lot better in this one. One detail I noticed, though, is you can actually put away your gun during this part in the remake. You cannot do it here. Um, so, like, in the, um, remake, you can actually jump on that conveyor belt and it'll actually move Conker around. Um, so that was, like, a nice little attention to detail they added there. They didn't have to, but it's still cool that they did that. Now, this part's a little trickier in the S64 version. I mean, it's still an easy segment, but there's still rare occasions where it's possible to get shot, even while jumping in slow motion. While it's still possible in the Xbox remake, you've really got to be a slow player in order for that to happen. Where here, it seems like it happens more by accident. Like it's a programming error. Yeah, I, I'm honestly going to um, confess, I was never really a big fan of the Matrix, but I still love this part. I think it's clever. Especially for its time. I mean, if they did this nowadays, people would definitely roll their eyes, though, because Matrix parodies have been done to death. But at the time, like, when this was made, this was really, you know, clever, really funny. I mean, especially for an N64 game. I can't think of any other games on N64 that had, like, um, reliance on parodies or anything. I mean, you could count Star Fox, I suppose, because some people like to think of that as, like, a homage to, um, Star Wars. And then, not to mention how so many quotes in the game are, like, quotes from actual movies.
Yeah, I remember in the remake they had it where, um, like in this they made it look like the knight landed in his neck, but in the remake they made it look like it went through his forehead. Which is strange, I don't know how a knife went through a helmet, but... <laughs> there he must have one strong throwing arm. Yeah, I hate how Barry really isn't doing anything during this part. They try, you know, they show that she's running in the opposite direction whenever you head to the other side, but, um... So trying to get the illusion that she's over there, like, shooting on the other end, but... If you, you know, rotate the camera over to look at her, you'll see she's doing nothing just standing there. So, yeah, she has no help during this part, outside the cutscene. Yeah, I noticed they redid that scene a little differently in the Xbox remake. They had it where Conker did a slow motion spin kick. Over here they had him doing like a rapid, like a, kind of like a wall jump kick towards him. Yeah, this room looked a lot better in the remake. They just added a few more, like, uh, details here and there. They added, like, a few windows to give it kind of, like, a bit of dramatic lighting. And then there's a giant, like, um, golden ball in the middle that has, like, dollar signs in it. It just kind of made, like, a nice little object of scenery. And then when you went through his tunnel, you could actually see, like, an actual glowing effect reflecting off the characters and... Well, there you go, materialist. But you can talk. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, where do I start? Come here, my little beauties. Panther King just magically appears out of nowhere then. He's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> hey, After his part revealed that he was there the whole time, but you can't see him in the gameplay, unfortunately. Hey, what about me? Gotcha. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wish the game actually did let you like uh, chase them around a bit more. Like um I hate how you just have to collect three and then it skips ahead. Some players might have been relieved by that, but I honestly thought it looked like a lot of fun trying to get them all. But still leads to um, a pretty funny little short sequence here. <laughs> oh, cool. Millionaire! <laughs> I'm a millionaire, Barry! Hey, Barry! What are you looking at? Conquer, honey! Oh. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> Emperor Palpatine. Who's this guy? Barry, you know who he is? You got me. Yes. At last. A red squirrel. Good. Red squirrel? Oh. I think he means me. I just find it funny. The Panther King just happens to have a Don't throne in his bank guy. vault. <laughs> Unless he's the fabled. 
Mabel. Panther King. But he was just in stories like my mum used to tell me to get me to sleep. Well, I can't say it's the strangest thing to happen to Money Ball. Scrooge McDuck all. flat out has a high diving board. The fairy Panther King. <laughs> Who are you calling a fairy? No. I'll admit that no, joke went over my head as a fairy, kid. I, I didn't know what the other like term for fairy table, meant. Like so. a legend, you know, like, thought of, doesn't it? Doesn't matter. Oh. No. No. Doesn't matter. Not to anymore. Not for you. Weasel. Right here, boss. Your bounty. Ah. Thanks very much. I mean, are we really supposed to feel shocked that oh, we got betrayed by this guy? Yeah. I mean, it was obvious he was you a villain from the first time we met him. Me. So you're not gonna kill him? Not exactly. Step aside, Conker. I know how to deal with men like this. Hmm. Such loyalty. Misplaced. Get rid of her. Easiest thing in the world. Yeah, I like how they actually Sorry, gave Barry a, like an expression during Business this part when he said get rid of her. She just had the same facial expression in um, the Xbox version, so it made her look like she had no emotions during this part. Hey, mind we Barry? If this were the Xbox version, this scene would still be going on. She'd still be getting shot down, which God, it was so ridiculous in that version. Hey, Barry. Oh, no. I remember this was the first spoiler of the game I ever got. Because, um, you know, as you know, as a kid, I didn't really get a chance to play through this game all the way because my parents didn't want me playing mature rated games. But I remember, like, uh, someone at school, um, they said they played through the game and uh, they told me that Barry dies at the end. <laughs> it's like, what? Where's my milk, Professor? Professor? Oh, you shut how yeah, I kind of wish we got like a better context for what happened during this scene. I mean, it's obvious the professor, you know, did something that caused an alien to get inside of um the Panther King's um, stomach or something. But I wish we actually saw a scene like we should have seen him like preparing him a glass of milk, and then he put like a little pot or something in there. Then that would have made more sense. You know, he should have given it more of a suspense. Oh, you see oh, the really? Panther King yeah. do something, and you're oh, wondering what yeah, it was. So, you know, most people see that, and they probably think, oh, it was poison. But, um, instead, you know, um, it turned out to be an alien egg or something like that. That would have been interesting. I pointed that out many times during my playthroughs of this game, though. This game had so much story potential, but it chose to ignore... Have more of a nonsensical story, and I honestly wish it did have. You know, just because it's a comedy doesn't mean it can't have a coherent story. I mean, Banjo is doing Banjo Tui or comedy games, and they had um, you know, better narrative. They had a good presentation for how the game starts off, and um, they bothered giving a conclusion for how the villain was defeated. And so I still want to know, what did the professor need with Conquer in the first place? I mean, it was obviously a diversion to keep the, the king's mind um, occupied while he's actually trying to kill him. But what did he need the squirrel for? I, I really want to know what the answer for that was. Because um, even even um, when you know um, he was moments away from killing the king, he, he still acted like he needed conquer for something. Because he told him, "I think you're coming with me." So it makes you wonder what did he need a squirrel for? Such a beautiful animal. So yeah, I know some the xenomorph Heinrich. Um, he has like a darker appearance in this game. Um, more like the original color scheme of the actual xenomorphs from Alien, but in the remake they gave him more of a bluish design. I'm wondering if they tried doing that to separate it, try not to get a copyright strike. I don't know, but 
I mean, here they flat out just stole the design from Alien, and in the remake, it's like they just changed him a different color. I honestly liked him better with the darker color scheme, but um, I'll admit though, they, maybe they changed him blue so he didn't stick in with the background as much. I don't know. But, yeah, like um, the Xbox version definitely had more color variety when it came to like um, scenery. Cause a lot of the scenery in the N64 game can be um, very similar in color, which makes it harder to distinguish like um, you know, like what's a door, what's a hole, what's a window in some cases. So, yeah, I, I do kind of like I I do like the dark scenery here, but I do like on the Xbox remake you can actually see like what's in the room. The remake kind of gave this part like more of um, a glow red um, light effect, like after you open the airlock. I mean, there's a slight tint of red during this part, but it's not as noticeable as it was in the remake. Yeah, one thing that was always fun about this game is um, when you see these cutscenes and then eventually you, you see the movies that these cutscenes are based off of and then it makes you realize, oh, that's where that game got it from. I don't get why, like, a lot of people when they describe this game, they say Conquer was a real foul mouth, but he barely cursed in this game. He only said bitch twice in this game, he said ass once. That's it. <laughs> I'd love to find out how he survived because I know um, both the description of the sequel and even a Conquer Line Reloaded confirmed he was alive because um, the multiplayer mode served as both a prequel and a sequel to the war segments of um, Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and um, during the future segments, it reveals he's still alive. He somehow he somehow came back to um, Conquer's planet and um, made a new army of teddies. So I wish they explained how. <laughs> Yeah, that's one thing they never, like, I don't think Chris Evers ever confirmed that, if the multiplayer mode was canon. Because it is strange how the multiplayer mode actually had story and cutscenes to it, but none of it really felt like it connected to the events of Conference Bad Fur Day. I mean, especially when you compare it to the manual from the Institute 4 game. They mentioned how originally the Panther King was um, a servant to the king, but after um, he angered him so badly, the king um, removed his leg. So that was supposed to, that tells you why he's a cripple in um, a futuristic wheelchair. But in um, Conquer Line Reloaded, during the first level, it reveals he was kind of like um, kind of like a Nazi general for the Teddies, and um, the, the mission during that was to defeat him. And in the end, um, they shoot like one final blow to him, and it causes his legs to get blasted off. So that goes against like the lore and the answer. Game. So it leads me to believe that the Xbox um, multiplayer is non-canon. It was just a made-up stories for the sake of a multiplayer mode, but it had no real connection to the game. And it angers me how originally Microsoft wanted a sequel for that instead of um, an actual, you know, when people wanted a sequel to Conquer, they wanted a sequel to Bad Fur Day, not the, the live multiplayer mode in the Xbox version. Almost, it's like I hear so many people, almost nobody liked the multiplayer mode in the Xbox game. They like the N64 version a lot better. They want to see people remake that multiplayer mode and give it online capabilities. Not, because when you compare the two, they really are dumbed down. Um, I mean, pretty much the new one is basically just um, a clone of Team Fortress 2, except with um, less variety. I mean, I, I really didn't like um, the characters that much in um, the wide world. You know, I liked how in um, the N64 version, a lot of the characters were based on the actual story mode. Um, and I liked how you could even type in cheat codes to play as the actual, like, uh, main and NPC characters in the game. Like, um, Hawker, Greg the Grim Reaper, the General, or Generals, I should say. 
There's a funny little detail that shows up right here. Look closely in the background. Conker's um, eye texture is still um, floating on the robotic suit. They, they use like a little frame texture to give him like the shine in his eyes along with um, a way like those are also kind of like his eyelids to help uh, block off like the full shape of his actual eyeball. Just, uh, so it's kind of funny how you can see in. those just floating in midair on the oh, helmet yeah. still. Right. That's funny. Here's the plan. Luckily, they I fixed that in the remake. Anyone, that there's been a lockup, quite a bad one at that, left in the game. If you will say, well, I don't know, help me out with this guy here. What do you think? Hmm. Now, uh, get rid of this background. It's really grimy. That's better. Um. Weapons, maybe? Yeah, this part was done a uh, lot better in the N64 version. Let's see now. Uh, yeah. Like, I like how they actually well, give a closer yeah. look at what Conker is looking at during oh. this part. Oh. Had more of a fixed oh. camera angle during the yeah. Xbox remake. Then he picked up a crossbow oh. during this part in the remake, but they still had the sound effects of the shotgun. Oh. That was just really lazy. Oh. <laughs> I like how here they made it look like he was looking at the rocket launcher, but then he yeah. goes for the samurai sword. Right. In the remake, they okay. didn't show what he was looking at, so that kind of ruins the humor of that part. And then, um, not to mention when he um, is about ready to... Well, when he resumes time to get ready to kill Heinrich, Heinrich actually looks around like he shakes his head and he has no idea where he is. In the Xbox remake, they didn't bother doing that. They just had him standing still. With his idle animation. I thought that was really lazy. Three, two, one. And action. Whoa. Oh no. That's a bit volatile. Shouldn't the floor be melting now? I thought the aliens were full of acid. Well. Suppose that's it. Anything else? Who are these guys? Oh, hello. You again. <laughs> if it isn't Conquer, now Frankie hey, actually looked Mr. better Stroke. in the remake during you this part. His animations were actually improved a lot during that part. Key. He had him like leaning yes. in closer to Conquer when he asked, Wait, like, how, how are you doing, Mr. Squirrel? In fact, there seems to be an empty throne. So bloody right, His voice is different on, all of a Conker. sudden. A punk to throw you. What? But I, no, you don't understand. I don't really want to be king. I, I. Oh. Oh no, I forgot to. I should have brought Barry back to life. Oh no. Hello, Procomer. Ah, oh, thank God. What are you doing? Get off. It's okay. It'll be good. And the rest of the guys. <laughs> He's still alive. Yeah, I like it in here. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, King. <laughs> <laughs> king, you couldn't be king of a toilet. <laughs> yeah, you're king of a toilet. <laughs> you don't know how close you are. You realize that? You just do not know. Ah, uh, sir. Hi. This king. I don't know that. Can, can I be your general? Oh, no. Of all the people in the world that I don't like, I'm in a room full of them. I've heard the good news. We came back from holiday as soon as we could. Just to celebrate with you on this wonderful, momentous occasion. Didn't we, ladies? There we go. The king is dead. Long live the king. Yeah, long live the king. Long live the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long live the king. Will you stop repeating me? I'm not repeating him. Long live the 
Strange how this game goes from a real funny, raunchy tone to a real down and depressing tone at the very end. I mean, I remember when I first played this game, I, I laughed at the beginning of the game. I thought it was so funny when, like, you saw just Conqueror as a king. It, you're just wondering, like, what the heck happened? So you're thinking it's gonna be a funny story, but then in the end, it's like, wow, that was depressing. I have all the money in the world, all the land. And all that stuff. But you know, I don't really think I want it. I just want to go home with Barry and, I don't know, have a bottle of beer. Hmm. It's not gonna happen. It's true what they say. The grass is always greener. And you don't really know what it is you have. Until it's gone. 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 And that was Conker's Bad Fur Day. That's the last we ever saw of this game. Which is a real shame. There was originally supposed to be a sequel, but it never happened. Hopefully nowadays with the partnership that Nintendo and Microsoft have been having lately, hopefully it can lead to them letting Nintendo, you know, make it. Because clearly Microsoft doesn't want the sequel, so maybe they'll let Nintendo have it. Make a little money off that as well. But yeah, like, it's interesting how, in a way, as, you know... Comically inappropriate as this game is, it actually does have a pretty good moral in the end. Um, the way I see it is it's pretty much like a cautionary tale of the dangers of alcohol. I mean, yeah, you could take the obvious that it's, um, you know, a message about um, learning to appreciate what you have, because it's not always going to be there in life. But, um, yeah, to me, this is also a cautionary tale on the dangers of alcohol. Because if you think about it, this a lot of this probably never would have happened if Conker never got drunk at the beginning. If he just stayed home with Barry, maybe none of this would have ever happened. So Conker has to live with that guilt for the rest of his life now, and it's a pretty deep ending. Son, um... Eventually, there is a little epilogue at the end. It doesn't give away much, but it kind of teased the idea of a sequel. I'll get to that when it gets there. So, what'll it be? Um, scotch. Single malt. Space high. No ice. Huh. A man of taste. There you go. Whoa, whoa there, cowboy. Keep it coming. Huh. Oh, 
Save the pile. Yeah. Looking a bit down. What's the matter? Ugh. You wouldn't believe it. Anyway. I don't want to talk about it. I'll just drink this. So, compared to the beginning of the game, if you look closely, you'll notice that Conqueror heads in the opposite direction of where he headed originally, so it kind of implies that he's going to head in a, you know, it's like if the last path he took took him in a quite a crazy situation, what will the other path take him? And that's the last we ever saw of Conqueror. Well, that's all I have to show for now. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.